In this lesson, we'll learn how to work with Sketchbook Designer brushes on a paint layer. All right, great. So um, now that we know where things are and we know how to work with a layer-based approach to our projects, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about paint brushes. Now, brushes are really the pivotal part of any drawing or illustration program. But here in Sketchbook Designer, since this application works with both pixels and vectors, it's important to know kind of the workflow for working with each different type of brush. So um, in this document, uh, it's sort of a slimmed down version of the previous document we looked at. And uh, what I've got here is my sketch of my shoe. And you can see here if I select that layer folder, I've actually dropped the opacity on that just a little bit. Uh, we've got a color layer hidden down here. We'll get to that in just a moment. But let's go ahead and work on this shoe layer up above the sketch. So um, the brushes here, notice it's a paint layer. The brushes are going to be in this area right here. And these are your basic sketchbook designer brushes. Notice that I have a pencil selected. So moving from left to right here, we have our pencil, we have our pen, we have our paintbrush, our marker, our airbrush, our solid brush. This one is a custom brush. We'll actually be learning about this in another lesson. And then we have our eraser right here. Now, these brushes are great on their own. You can sit here and you can experiment with some of these if you'd like. Maybe draw out to the side. You can kind of see what a pencil looks like compared to a pen, compared to maybe a brush, or even a marker or airbrush. Let me undo back a few times. Now, when it comes to undos and redos here inside of Sketchbook Designer, Control-Z is your undo. Control-Shift-Z is your redo, just like so. Now, these brushes, their functionality is extended by the attribute editor. Remember, we learned about this in a previous lesson. And in its puck form here, we can just simply come over, let's say, for our pencil and click on it. And we can momentarily gain access to all the settings for the pencil. You can see here there are actually three different basic pencils here inside of Sketchbook Designer. We have our sharp pencil. We have here the second one, which is our medium pencil, and then we have our dull pencil here. There's also size and intensity settings here. So um, let's go ahead and look at size. Obviously, size is going to control the size of the stroke. Uh, if we were to set that all the way up to like a 12 point, you'll notice that as I do that, we actually get sort of a stroke preview right in the center of our canvas. So if I come in now and begin to draw with the pencil, you can see what it looks like with a very large stroke. And honestly, if I draw really lightly with my Cintiq, you can see that it is indeed pressure sensitive. I can draw really heavy or really light, and I can get a, a stroke that is sensitive to the pressure I'm utilizing. Now, let's just go ahead and expand the attribute editor here, uh, because size and intensity can both be controlled with keyboard shortcuts. And this is a really great way to control both of those. So if I hold the B key on my keyboard and just drag to the left, watch that size slider. You'll see that actually starts to go down. And we can drag the right to increase the size. So let's go ahead and ramp that all the way back up and let's look at intensity. And we'll just come up here to our color editor and let's just go ahead and give this like an orange color here. There we go. So intensity right now is set at 50% and I'll just drag a nice line there. Now, the I key on your keyboard, it will do the same thing for intensity that the B key did for the brush size. So with a really low intensity here, you can see here my color is almost very transparent. And with a very high intensity, we get a very vibrant, fully saturated color. So um, that is the size and intensity of your brush. Uh, let me come over here and just grab my eraser, and I'll just go ahead and erase that. Now, notice that the eraser, now that I have it selected, also has three different versions of the eraser. Uh, and if we mouse over those and read the tooltip, you'll see there's hard, medium, and soft. So, uh, again, that just pertains to how you want to erase. If you want to erase with sort of a soft edge, sort of a, a medium soft edge, or sort of a hard edge. You can see the difference between those three. So uh, we'll just go ahead and erase those three again. Now, again, each one of these different brushes is going to have different attributes that can be set, with the basic ones being the same, size or intensity. So there's different types of pens. There's different types of brushes. 
Now, when you get over here to the marker, you're going to notice there's a rotation setting that's been added here, and that's because the tip of a marker, or the nib for that marker, often matters in terms of how the stroke looks. So you can kind of see a small preview of that nib, kind of moving at a, uh, really a 45 degree angle through the mouse cursor. If we wanted to rotate that around, you can see now it's almost at a 90 degree angle. So we can come in and adjust that and affect the type of stroke that we're drawing here. So um, let me go ahead and erase those again. All right, fantastic. Now the reason why we're using this file right here, I'm just going to hold my space bar and use my navigation uh, ring to kind of center this up, is I want you to practice using some of these basic brushes. Maybe come in here and grab your pen and use maybe say this option right here for soft felt. We'll just set our color back to black and maybe we can come in here and start to clean up this line work. Maybe if you'd like to, uh, feel free to come in and begin to draw in some nice clean line work on top of the kind of sketchy lines that I've already created here. Now, I want you to get used to using these uh, basic brushes, but let's go ahead and move down here to our custom palette. Um, now, I know there's some options here. We're going to look at these in just a moment. These right here are for snapping uh, your brush stroke to either the brush or rather snapping the brush center to the ed or to a curve or snapping the edge of a brush stroke to a curve. We're going to learn about that here in a couple of lessons. So um, don't worry about that just yet. But in terms of the custom palette down here, I'm just going to go ahead and drag this up. There we go. We've got a lot of different brushes down here inside the custom palette. And you can use any of these brushes on a paint layer. Um, you can see there's several different types of special effects type brushes. You can see some ink splots, things of that nature. These are all essentially custom brushes that come packaged with Sketchbook Designer. So um, you can see here, if we mouse over them, they all have names. Um, you can come in and, and utilize brushes down here, or you can utilize the basic brushes up here. Now, when I talked about these settings right here, we're going to get to these in just a little bit, but these right here control the locking of transparency when it comes to the strokes you paint. So over here, um, we're basically locking one aspect of a layer. So let's bring in our color layer right here. Now in this layer, I've just simply come in and I have filled the entire shoe with this orange color. So I'm going to come in and grab, let's say maybe we'll just grab the solid brush here. Now the solid brush really doesn't have many options, it just has a size option here in terms of the attributes for it. So there's not a lot to be concerned about. But with this option selected right here, our, the strokes we paint are not constrained at all. Now this does it does matter rather which layer you have selected. In this case, it doesn't matter which one of these settings I choose uh, because either we're going to be able to paint or we're not going to be able to paint. So with this second setting selected, basically transparent pixels are locked and I can't paint on those pixels. Whereas with this particular setting uh, checked, you can see I can paint anywhere. Now let me just undo back a couple times and I'm going to come down and select this color layer because um, I'll illustrate that for you here. You can see I can paint anywhere covering up my orange and, as well as covering up the transparency. But if I come over and select this option here and let's say we wanted to paint maybe kind of this section of the shoe black, you can see how quickly and easily we can do that because I know that this particular layer contains both transparent pixels and opaque pixels. So this option is basically restricting the paint that I'm applying to just the opaque pixels only. So um, feel free to experiment with this option a little bit. This is actually pretty cool. Uh, a lot of other applications actually handle this inside their respective layer manager. So um, in this case, we're actually controlling this as a setting for the brush that we're currently utilizing. So um, again, feel free to experiment with any of these basic brushes here, as well as some of these maybe down here inside the custom palette to get used to painting on paint layers here inside of Sketchbook Designer. Now with paint layers, a good grasp on that, we're going to move on and in the next lesson, we're going to begin tackling how we can work with brushes on a vector layer.